Okay, we are finally out of the music. Phonics. I don't even know what this is. Is this like a game? Oh, wow. They just cut out the whole arc. Let's be pal. I see a girl. I see a boy. The boy and girl smile. I smile. I'm just gonna read everything out. The boy and girl laugh. I laugh. Wow, I learned a lot. Oh, this is like a story. Never mind. That's cool. I wave to a girl and boy. I point to the swings. The girl, the boy, and I run to the swings. I point to the slide. The girl, the boy, and I run to the slide. The boy, girl, and I smile. The boys and girls ran to the playground. I see you in that tree. I see you in that sandbox. I see you and you in the bushes. I see you in that tire. That was a fun game of hide and seek. They all can. Pam and Matt can. Tim and Tam cannot. Matt can tip Pam. Pam can dip for Matt. Can tip tip. Can Tim tip Tam? Bro, I hate the old books, the old readings of kids. No, no offense, but I hate these tongue twisters, bro. Like how they're so short, but they try and fit so much in. This just feels so wrong. Tim did tip Tam. Pam and Matt see it. Matt can tip Tam. Pam can tip, can dip for Tim. They all can. I also hate the rhymes because it just it just becomes a tongue twister. Man. I hate old- I hate old writings. Unit 2. Time to play. Let's play a game. A little game. What? Okay, I was gonna make a dumb joke. Never mind. Tag. Tag. Tim is it. He cannot tag Pam. Pam can surpass Tim. Pam is on- is on top. Can Tim get her? Tag. Tim got Pam. She is it. Tim can pass Pam. Can Pam get him? Hop, hop, hop. One sound a pad. I see it, said Matt. Hop, hop, hop. Matt did not nab this one. One hid in the moss. I see it, said Matt. Hop, hop, hop. Matt did not nab this one. Why would you want to do it? You want to cook it? Matt had a hat. I can toss my hat on top of it, said Matt. Matt got that one. Does bro want to cook a frog? What's going on here? Pass the ball. Pass the ball to me, said Pam. Pam got the ball from Tim. Pass the ball to me, said Matt. Matt got the ball from Pam. Pam is tall. Pass it to her, said Tim. Tam got the ball from Matt. Toss it in, Tam, said Pam. Tam got one in. The pals did it. We all know they ain't real basketball MFs because they said toss it in. It's called shoot it. In conclusion, we got we know they ain't legit. Unit 3. We are a team. Well, we're a team. The top bunk. Sam cannot get on the top bunk. It is very tall. Who can do it? Tim thinks he can. No, Tim is down. He cannot do it. Pam thinks about it. She winks at Matt. Pam and Matt link hands. Will it work? They did. Tim is, is up on the top bunk. I should have a challenge where older kids try and read these old, old stories. I feel like this would mess up the words so much. Giving. Kim has been working with her mom. She has lots of jam. Kim would like to give the jam to her pals, Tam and Matt. Tam and Matt have been filing a sack. Who is the sack for? Tam and Matt give the sack to Kim. They tell her, this sack is for you. T Kim gives jam to t Matt and Tam. She tells them about the mashing the jam. The kids like giving and getting. Okay. Come see Mox. Can I just play it? Come see my pal Mox, said Peg. Yeah, I'm going to take a break. Mox will mix six eggs in a pot, said Peg. Tin Man and Gus went to see Mox mix the eggs. There are six eggs in this box. Mox will mix one egg at a time, Wait, aren't you, said uh, Peg. That's kind of sus. Mox is one egg mixing fox, said Tin Man. 
Now there are no more eggs in the box. Mox did it, said Peg. This feels kind of weird. Bug has a pack of gum. Bug says, who would like some of my gum? I will have some of your gum, says Zack. Bug hands Zack some. Bug hands Zack some more of the gum. And he dies from a sugar overdose. The gum gets big. It gets very, very big. The gum picks up some fuzz. It picks up some junk. It picks up Bug. Now Zack and Bug are in the gum. Your gum is fun, says Zack. Why they say that? They're going to die. Well, those who are dead. Ah, I know a lot of ducks. I follow seductive. This is a duck. Look at its neck and legs. They are not long. Ducks have down. They rub their down again and again with their bills. Ducks are quick. They know how to go. They can do it well. Look at the duck's quills. A duck can go up, up, up. Ducks like the sun. They will go to it. They will not quit. Now you know all about ducks. But can you quack like one? Yes, because I watched Thomas and Friends. Quack, quack. Ah, send this to all the Reddit mods. What can I make out of this page? I will make a ship. I must make a shape. I will do it like this. I will share with you. You can make a ship like I did. You must make the same shape. We did it. We made ships. Let's take them out to the lake. We can race them here. What a great game. My ship sank, but your ship is great. I want someone smiling like this. Meet Pete. These are his teeth. He takes good care of them. Pete has more teeth than Matt. Matt has more teeth than Nan. Nan has only one. Pete feels his back teeth, then feels his top teeth. Out pop Pete's top teeth. Matt says, that's great. Now you will get big teeth. Matt tells Pete, set your teeth here. Where did Pete's teeth go? Tim is on a bike ride. He knows he must not go he, over he the white driving line. the car. Tim rides his bike over one pile, then the other. Bro doesn't even have like the proper like protection. I would like to do falls. that again, says Tim. Tim rides a long, long way. I feel like I have been riding for miles, he says. Tim takes time to look at the lake. The sun is going down, he says. It's time to go. Tim knows the way back. He's going to fall. He rides over the two piles again. Dad asks, did you have a nice ride? Somehow he did not fall. Yes, says Tim, but now I would like some pie. How is that possible? Mom told Pete and Joe, Go out. You are inside way too much. Pete and Joe were very cold. Their noses were cold. Their hands were cold, too. I don't like to go out when it is cold, said Pete. Fam, I would kill to have a snow day. What I've never witnessed the fun of a snow day, so I have it. no idea how the Lord Pete worked. Pete thought about it. 
We could roll down that hill, said Joe. I'll do it, but only if you do it too, said Pete. Joe was bold. He went rolling, rolling, rolling down the hill. Pete did it too. They did it again and again. Mom came rolling down the hill. You are never too old to roll, said Mom. I'd like to do this in my family, Ruv. Them kids look as heck. The wildlife. Bait on chain. Look at that man on the cage. You might think he won't get in there, but he will. We call this a daredevil. The man is going down into the bay to look at fish. He uses the cage to keep himself safe. The cage has a chain on it. The man put bait on the chain. He sits and uh, waits. Honestly, these are good stories to help a kid learn to read, honestly. First he sees teeth, then a head, then fins, then a tail. He aims and takes a shot. By the way, the big fish sharks takes ain't, the bait. Sharks ain't it menaces. yanks the bait this way They're and that way. Peaceful. In a time like this, it is good to be in a cage. Like I just wanted to spell the myth right now that sharks aren't the bad guys. The man guys. got a great shot thanks to the cage. If you want to see big fish, using a cage is a safe way to do it. Seals. These are seals. You can tell a seal by looking at its ears. A seal's ear is just a tiny hole on each side of its but head. This is an animal that ain't a human. It's probably going to have the most elaborate near the sea, the man. where it is easy to find fish. Some seals sit on the cold ice. Other seals sit on sunny beaches. It is not easy for seals to get onto the shore or back into the sea. They have to roll and hop to do it. Seals are more at ease in the sea than when they are out of it. They dive into the sea for a meal. They are very quick. It is easy for them to catch fish. These seals live at this beach all year long. You can see them lying upon the shore or the rocks. Look at the two little seal pups. They are so cute. Yes, otters. The oh. other seals teach the pups how to dive and catch fish. Look on the right. A seal pup is waiting near the ledge. The little seal pup leaps in after the big seal. They will go find more fish to eat. Dad asked Matt to be up at dawn. When he saw the sun, he rubbed his eyes. He did not want to get up. He hauled himself out of his bag. Matt yawned as he put on his backpack. Mom woke up Nan. Nan bawled and caused a fuss. She so all these stories take place in the same verse, I guess. The Starfall verse has lore. She must feel like I do, thought Matt. They went up the path that led to the ridge. It was a quick hike. Did you hear that call? asked Dad. It came from that ledge up there. Matt was the first to see the hawk. It beat its wings and took off from the ledge. It soared over them. They all looked up in awe. Have you kids ever seen a hawk before? asked Dad. They took turns looking at the hawk. Mom taught the kids. A hawk can see food from a long way away. Look, it sees something. It will catch it and eat it. The hawk caught something and took it back to the ledge to eat it. Matt and Nan were lucky to see a hawk. Matt said, 
Now I know why some people like to get up at dawn. For day three, this is not over. Most hawks live out in the wild, but not pale male. What type of name is he pale likes male? To live in the city. Pale male. Is this like a real actual pale male animal? This real. On a ledge. Is, it, is a bro actually named pale male? They fix up the same home in the same place year after year. This is where pale male's mate lays her eggs. Pale male's mate lays one or two eggs each year. Hawks' eggs are called a clutch. The eggs are light blue and flecked. Not everyone was happy that Pale Male had made his home in the city. One group of people claimed that the hawk's home was uh, messy. We got the off they the asked day. the Speaking city the to clear the home are. off of the ledge. And so the we, city. We all know weird invasive asked. species, right? Building the houses. Another group of people heard the news about Pale Male's home. They said it was not right to clear the ledge. They asked the city to put the home back in place. It took three weeks of fighting before Pale Male could come back home. Pale Male still lives in the city with his mate. Many people come to see them flying from their home high on the ledge. Dad told me a plane ride is called a flight. He and Mom had been on a plane before. I had not. This would be my first flight. Mom found our row and we slid into our seats. We were flying a long way. Mom told me we were going to the other side of the globe. She gave me a game to play to pass the time. The plane oh my god, this reminds me of a dumb story. It seemed like it was, when I was flying a young very kid. slowly. So like, the context of the story I is, out. I was flying I could see to the Philippines, I was like five years old with my parents. Below. I think this was when we were on we the were up on the so plane. High. There was like a flight flying attendant, and I kept just like I thought like it a would flight be. was bad or something. Like, I just, it was so goofy, man. Mom told me I should try to sleep. At first I Sleeping thought, is, is no way, bro. I can't sleep. But you actually kind of have to do. Then I thought, maybe I'll just close my eyes. A man woke me up. He said, would you like some juice? Yes, please, I said. He gave me the juice and a plate of sliced fruit. Now I have flown on a plane just like mom and dad. I hope we go on another flight. I know we will. We have to get back home. Damn, these these comics are pretty representative. These comics are pretty diverse. Like, we had a protagonist earlier that was clearly adopted, and we got this girl, too, who clearly has some sort of conditions with her legs. This is pretty cool, actually. I support. Like, I forgot to mention that, but that was actually pretty cool. Starfall was doing the diversity before it was cool. Look at these round little eggs. There are insects inside them. One of the eggs is hatching. There are many kinds of insects. Some insects look the same as they grow. Dementics All not. insects have six legs. They use their legs to crawl. Some insects have legs made for hopping or even for swimming. Most insects have wings. Some are skilled at flying. Have you ever seen an insect flitting, swishing, dipping, and diving? Sometimes insects seem bad. You might find them eating your snacks. A few insects might even give you an itchy bite. Not every insect is bad. Most insects are good. They help us in many ways. Think of some of the ways insects help us.
This is a spruce tree. Spruce trees grow in many places. Spruce trees are evergreens. Evergreen trees stay green year round. They do not drop their leaves in the fall. This insect, called a spruce beetle, is a threat to spruce trees. It kills a spruce tree by laying its eggs inside of it. The beetles lay their eggs from spring until just before fall. The beetle bores through the tree and makes spaces for its eggs. These spaces look like deep scratches inside the tree. Once the eggs hatch, the new beetles eat away even more of the tree. This makes the tree very sick. It will turn red and die. The dead trees are very dry and can quickly catch on fire. The new beetles come out of the tree after one year. They hide from the cold in the base of the tree. In the spring, the beetles spread to another tree where they will lay their eggs. Sprays will not kill these insects. The only way to stop them is to cut down and take away the sick trees. Once upon a time, a fox went out walking. She saw ripe, juicy grapes hanging high upon a vine. Soon those grapes will be mine, she vowed. She soon found that she could this not reach I really any of the grapes. I've been listening to the stories because they're all like she thought as styles. she prowled. I wish I knew how to get them down. First, the fox ran at the vine. She sprang up with a growl, but she did not get any grapes. She only got a mouth full of grape leaves. The fox hopped up and down on her hind legs. She tried again and again. Every time, she got nothing but leaves. A wise owl saw her hopping. Now, what is going on down there? He asked himself. The owl soared down to take another look. When the fox saw the owl, she said with a frown, "There is nothing good about these grapes. They are sour and not as ripe as I thought." The fox began to walk away with a scowl, but the wise owl knew she was only pouting. He asked. Would you like the grapes if I got them down for you? It was a rainy day. Sam and Pam really, felt bored. Like early, the only early, thing on TV January. was about an elf who lived in an elm tree. I don't really care. The girls yawned. There is nothing to do. Sam said. Mom walked into the room. What's on TV? She asked. Nothing, sulked Pam. We could always bake cupcakes, said Mom. That's a great task for bored folks. Mom got a bowl and a whisk down from the shelf. What does it take to make cupcakes? Asked Pam. We'll need milk and three eggs from the fridge, said Mom. Sam, please get two and a half cups of flour. I'll get the other things. Sam tipped the flour into the bowl. Pam mixed in the milk. Mom put a pinch of salt into her palm. Then tossed it into the mix. Mom winked at the girls and said, "I know a baking trick." First, she cracked the eggs. She put the yolks into the mix 
and put the egg whites in another bowl. She whisked the egg whites until they were fluffy and then gently put them into the mix. Mom said, this trick will keep our cupcakes light and fluffy. Soon, the room smelled like cupcakes. How long does it take? asked Pam. Not long, said Mom. Let's talk while we wait. We can think of people who might want to have one of our cupcakes. I can think of two people right now, said Pam. Okay, that was Unit 6 in the garden. Se se unit 7 is look, listen, and learn. Okay. Seeds. We find seeds in most of the fresh foods we eat. This is because plants come from seeds. Some seeds are big, some seeds are small. There would be no plants without them. But how are seeds made? Plants make grains of pollen. Pollen is often yellow and light as dust. When a bee lands on a plant, pollen sticks to its body. When the bee flies to the next plant, some of the pollen falls off. If the pollen lands on the plant's pistol, something great happens. There is a seed case at the bottom of the pistol. The seed case holds the plant's eggs. Each grain of pollen on the top of the pistol connects to an egg in the seed case. Only those eggs connected to pollen can become seeds. Every seed contains a baby plant or seedling and food for it to eat. Sometimes the seed case changes. It might turn into a fruit, a pod, or a shell. Some seeds travel before they become plants. They might grow in a place far away from where they began. Some seeds travel by wind or water. Some are picked and sold in shops. Other seeds stick to animals or people. Have you ever had seeds stuck to your socks? Seeds need good soil, water, air, and sunlight to grow. Have you ever tried to grow a plant from a seed? Try it. You will love it. Your smile will grow to be just as big as your plant. Oh, now we're doing physics? Everything around us. We really went from we plants see, to physics. Hear, There's no shot. Smell, taste, or feel is made of something. That something is matter. Look at these ice cubes. Now look at the glass of water. They are each made of the same type of matter. It's true. Matter appears in different states. Two common states are solid and liquid. Energy causes matter to change state. Energy is the power to do something. When we add energy to an ice cube, it melts into water. Water is a liquid. When we take energy from water, it freezes into ice. Ice is a solid. Look closer. These are solid water molecules. A molecule is a very small bit of matter. Solid matter molecules hold together tightly. This is why solid matter has this shape. You can pick it up. Look closer. These are liquid water molecules. Liquid matter molecules let go and flow around each other. This is why liquid matter does not have a shape. Tip water from one cup to another. Did you observe it taking the shape of the cup? Try to grab water with your hand. Did you observe it flowing through your fingers? How much energy does it take to change solid matter to liquid matter? Well, that depends on the solid. 
It takes a little energy to melt ice. It takes a lot of energy to melt rock. What happens when we add energy to a liquid? As we add energy to water, it begins to boil. Do you see the bubbles in the water? That is liquid matter changing to a third state, gas. If we left the water boiling, it would seem to disappear. Where did it go? Gas molecules seem to disappear because they spread apart to fill space. You cannot see gas matter in the air, but it's there. You can feel it when you wave your arms. Can you predict what will happen if we take energy away from gas matter? That's right. It becomes liquid matter. What if we take energy from liquid matter? Yes, it becomes solid matter. Now you know about matter. No. You are ready to observe matter changing states. I've actually Try done these experiment experiments one before. My dad did that. Experiment one. It was one. pretty good. Put juice in an ice cube tray. Put the tray in the freezer overnight. You will have a solid treat in the morning. Experiment two. I Put think a lot of people do experiment in a glass. one just for fun. Yeah, Place just for like games. Place the glass in the sunlight. Like, I've done that before. Find out how that's long a, a it takes to get a liquid to drink. Ask your teacher for other matter experiments. Tam helped her mother and father pack the truck. This was the last market day of the season. Tam smiled. Mother smiled. Father smiled. The family depended on the market for money. This year had been a success. Father had sold all of his milk. Mother had sold all of her pie filling. Tam had sold all of her eggs. The family laughed and talked on the return trip to the farm. Mother asked Tam, "What will you do with your money, Tam?" Tam didn't have a plan for her money yet. She answered, "It's a secret." Mom, what will you do? Maybe I will get a bigger oven," she replied. "What about you, Dad? What will you get?" asked Tam. Father said. I have my eye on a set of woodworking tools. Suddenly, there was a loud noise. The truck began to slow. Dad had a hard time steering, but got off the road. The truck jerked to a stop. Smoke rose from under the hood. Wow! What happened? Asked Tam. Tam, mother, and father. Got out of the truck. They found a bent rebar stuck under the back fender. The front tires were flat.、Well, the、sad. wheels were bent. Now, What should we do? Asked、then. mother. Father answered, "I will call a tow truck." The tow truck driver drove to a repair shop. The mechanic raised the family's truck to get a better look. Father said, "This is a shame. We depend on that truck. I hope the mechanic can fix it." Mother said, "I hope it doesn't cost a lot of money." The mechanic said, "That rebar made a mess. There is a hole in the oil pan. I can fix that, but both front wheels must be replaced. I can start work in the morning. Here is the bill." Father looked at the bill and frowned. "I see," he said. Mother asked, "Is there a place to stay nearby?" Well, this is actually a sad, deep story. The family found a place to stay. Mother and father thought Tam was sleeping. They talked about the bill. Why is the story actually kind of deep? Tam heard them talking and got out of this bed. This is one of the only good stories I actually like. I think it's because I'm older. So that Mother asked, a lot, a lot "Do、harder. we have the money to pay for this?" Yes, the bill equals my milk sales and your pie filling sales," said father. Mother and father did not see Tam standing at the door. Tam thought about what mother and father had said. 
She knew mother would not get a bigger oven this year. She knew father would not get tools. Tam knew the farm depended on the truck. Tam didn't have a plan for her money before. She had a plan now. The next morning, Tam sat with her parents at the table. No one said very much. This is no one really was good. laughing. This story gets a 10 out of 10. Tam said, this gives, Mom, this Dad, I know how I word. want to spend my money. Oh, smiled Mother. What will it be? Tam answered, I want to help pay for the repairs to the truck. This gets the Megan Award. The family paid the mechanic for the repairs. They returned to the farm. Mother did not get a bigger oven this year. Father did not get woodworking tools. The family used the remaining money to make a new doghouse for Sparkle. It was money well spent. Hey, you know, I've took a temporary break and now we're back. You know, long ago and far away, what's this? Fairy tales now? Apparently. Oh, I remember this story. This is the story of Ricky Tiki Tavi. A truly brave this, well, mongoose. This story was weird to me going on. This made no sense a to me. A mongoose is a bit like a cat and a bit like a weasel. They like to snoop it's my around. Problem. Sorry. The mongoose family motto is, run and find out. A mongoose can move with super speed. They are known for hunting and eating snakes. If you lived in the jungles of India, there would be no better pet than a mongoose. This story will explain why this is so. When Ricky Tiki Tavi was still a young mongoose, he was carried away by a flood. The water took him from his mother and father. He nearly drowned. A little boy named Teddy found Ricky Tiki Tavi lying on the garden path. Teddy thought the mongoose was dead. Teddy's father carried the wet mongoose into their bungalow. Father dried Ricky Tiki Tavi with a warm towel. The mongoose opened his eyes, blinked once or twice, and then sneezed. Father set Ricky Tiki Tavi on the ground. Father said, Don't frighten him. Step back. Let's see what he does. Ricky Tiki Tavi sat up and put his fur in order. Then he climbed up onto Teddy's head. Many animals lived in the garden around the bungalow. Most of the animals were kind, okay, I remember but some this. were not. Two cruel cobra snakes named Nag and Nagina ruled the garden. All the other animals were afraid of them. Nag and Nagina were angry oh, Ricky Tiki Tavi had come to the bit. bungalow. They knew that a mongoose could kill a cobra. That's bad. Nagina came up with a wicked plan. She hissed to Nag, You slither into the bungalow and bite the father. The family will go away and take the mongoose with them. A bird overheard the cobra's voices. She spread the news all over the garden, but Ricky Tiki Tavi did not hear of it. Ricky Tiki Tavi usually slept under Teddy's chin, but tonight he was restless. He wanted to snoop around. He quietly opened the door to Teddy's room. Squeak! cried a muskrat. Please don't hurt me! Why would I hurt you? asked Ricky Ticky Tavi. You won't hurt me, but rumor is I might get hurt by being with you, answered the muskrat. Ricky Ticky Tavi was surprised. What is this rumor? And tell me the truth, he said. Nag and Nagina, the cobras, want you to leave the garden, answered the muskrat. The muskrat told Ricky Ticky Tavi about the cobra's plan to bite Teddy's father. Ricky Ticky Tavi's eyes glowed red. He loved his new family. It was his duty to protect them. He would not let anything harm them. Just then, Ricky Ticky Tavi heard hissing voices coming from the bathroom. Ricky saw Nag slide silently in through a crack in the wall. He watched Nag's shadow coil behind a water jug. Nagina did not follow. Nag said to himself, 
I will hide here in the bathroom. When the father comes in, I will bite him. Ricky Tikki Tavi would have to move fast. He quietly climbed on top of a water jug, and then Ricky Tikki Tavi flew from the jug and grabbed onto the back of Nag's head with his teeth. Oh, this the giant was like cobra rushed about. Ricky Tikki Tavi held on with all his might. The family heard the thrashing and woke up. They ran to the bathroom. Both the cobra and Ricky Tikki Tavi lay still. Teddy cried out, "Oh, Ricky Tikki Tavi, are you all right?" Ricky Tikki Tavi slowly raised his head. He was too. alive. Nag that. the cobra was no more. Father saw Ricky Tikki Tavi had saved the family. Father said, "Thank you. You are truly a brave mongoose." Ricky Tikki Tavi did many other great deeds. You can read about them in *The Jungle Book* by Rudyard Kipling. It's this one. Cinderella. Cinderella lived with her mother and father in a kingdom far away. Her parents were good people who owned a beautiful home on a large estate. They were wealthy compared with most. Cinderella, like all children her age, loved to laugh and play. She never ever thought about sad or scary things. Everything changed for Cinderella when, on a cold February morning, her mother died. Cinderella's father could not bear to see his child without her mother. Wait, he quickly Cinderella married a woman happily? who had two daughters of her own. Mary I did not know Cinderella used to have a happy life. What the heck? Cinderella I thought she was, was always trash. Of what? Her stepmother and stepsisters. She did not trust them. I thought them. this was different Cinderella because of not that. Not long after, Cinderella's father also died. Wow, I actually died. learned something today. This what was is the this end educating of Megan Cinderella's Day? What the heck? happy days. Ugh, Cinderella up. was wise to be wary. Her stepmother and sisters were greedy and cruel. Oh, so this story's even they worse. They made her a she servant in her own home. To Cinderella did servant. all of the cooking and cleaning. Slavery. They gave her only rags to wear. Even in her rags, Cinderella was more lovely than Mary and Clarice. The stepsisters knew this and were unfair to her because of it. Cinderella missed her parents and thought of them every day. She was often sad, but still did her chores with a smile. She dreamed of a better life. What else could she do? Audio been wacky. Cinderella answered a knock at the door. A short, hairy man handed her a letter, and said, "From the prince, miss." He bowed and went on his way. Cinderella carried the letter to her stepsisters. Clarice grabbed it greedily and said, "Give it here." Mary grabbed it from Clarice and said, "Give it to me. You'll tear it." Ah,、uh, I hate these two. Stepmother grabbed it from Mary. She read the letter and exclaimed, "The prince is having a ball tonight. Every girl in the whole kingdom must attend." Bro wants to get all the girls. Perhaps that means I can go too," said Cinderella. Clarice and Mary began to laugh. Stepmother hushed them. Yes, Cinderella, you may go to the ball. The sisters gasped. Cinderella was wary. There's always a catch. Stepmother said, "Perhaps these manipulate. I hate these parents like this guy. If you finish all of、mad. your chores, and if you find something to wear." She's more prevalent than more IRL. Mary and Clarice、so、kept like、Cinderella more, working the whole day. She had little time to do her own chores. By the time the coach arrived, Cinderella was still in rags. Cinderella opened the coach door to help her stepmother and stepsisters inside. Stepmother asked with a cruel laugh, "See, it was Cinderella.、Fun. Why aren't you ready to go?" Am I out here getting mad? Cinderella said not a word. Again, what the heck? She bowed. 
closed the coach door and watched as it rolled out of sight. Cinderella sat at the foot of the stairs. She began to cry. Oh, how I wish I could go to the ball. Let's do magic, lol. Suddenly, something magical happened. A light appeared on the stairs above her. Cinderella looked up and saw a woman unlike any she had seen before. The woman was so bright, Cinderella could barely keep her eyes open. The woman said, Hello, Cinderella. I am your fairy godmother. It's time to get ready for the ball. Before Cinderella could say a word, her rags had become a shimmering gown. On each tiny foot glittered a beautiful glass slipper. That's totally not a plot point. The fairy godmother changed a pumpkin into a coach and four mice into horses. She helped Cinderella into the coach. When Cinderella tried to thank her, the fairy godmother placed a finger on Cinderella's lips. Remember this, my dear child. Be home before midnight, for at that time the spell will be ended. Everything will be as it was. Cinderella had never been to a ball before. She knew only work and rags. She walked around the ballroom. She filled her eyes with all the beautiful sights. The prince saw Cinderella walking alone. He asked the king and queen, his parents, Who is that lovely young woman? The prince didn't wait for an answer. He walked up to Cinderella and asked her to dance. Cinderella did not know that he was the prince. Oh, wow, she saw some guy? It's actually kind of funny. Until she heard the first strike of midnight. That's actually funny. Oh, did you hear that bell? said Cinderella. I must keep my word and leave at once. Cinderella turned from the prince. He could not believe his eyes. She ran out of the ballroom and down the stairs to her carriage. She lost one of her slippers along the way, but did not stop to pick it up. Alternate the prince ran after her. By the time he reached the stairs, she was gone. All she had left behind was one glass slipper. How did not another the girl prince exclaimed, not have I the must same size find the young woman who fits this I slipper. A girl that looked exactly when like I do, the same size. I will How's marry it, her. Was it molded just for her? Like, how convenient is that magic? The prince searched for the young woman in every home in the kingdom. At last, he came to Cinderella's family estate. Mary and Clarice oh, yeah, didn't tell Cinderella rich. that the Cinderella prince was, was there. Was After, After all, the she hadn't been to the ball. Why would she need to know? Each sister, in turn, greedily tried on the slipper. It was too narrow for their feet. Wasn't one, like, like too big, too? Cinderella walked into the room machines. wearing her rags. She found herself face to face with the prince. Something goofy gonna happen. The prince knew Cinderella at once, even dressed in rags. He knelt before her and asked, Miss, perhaps you will fit this slipper. Cinderella's stepmother stood between Cinderella and the prince. No, oh, no, sir. This girl is but a up. servant. She could not have been at your ball. Who gon' tell her? But the prince would not be fooled. Cinderella sat down, and the prince placed the slipper on her foot. It fit perfectly. Cinderella pulled the other slipper from her pocket and put it on. Suddenly, her rags changed back into her shimmering gown. The prince's search had come to an end. Cinderella was the young woman he was looking for. Is this the boy who cried wolf or something? What is this? Dingo? What's a dingo? This is the story of a very oh, naughty, naughty boy okay. who lived on the island nation of Australia. His family owned a sheep station oh, just outside it. of a small town. The people of the town were very proud of the sheep on the station. It was their opinion that the flock wolf? was the best for a million miles around. 
the sheep's big fluffy oh, coat called for fleece Aussies? were bought and sold all around the world. Is this, a, is this boy who cried wolf? The boy kept watch over the sheep. They actually it was his it? job to protect the flock from wild dogs called dingoes. Boy who cried. It was lonely oh, work and he wait. was often Did bored. A eat a kid I'm once? sorry to mention it, but this boy would do anything for attention. The sheep wandered oh, and grazed on the hills wolf. above boy the town. Bingo, but Most of the time, they were near they enough to the bingo, town bingo. for the boy to see that makes and sense. hear the town. I, I still nailed it, though. I'm good. The boy thought to himself, I'm so bored watching these sheep. Every day goes by the same as the last. I need some action. They're not a fight, The then. boy did a very Ozo. naughty thing. He cried out loud and clear, Dingo! Dingo! You a fight, you could a dingo is after the sheep! You could probably he get some waited action. at the top of the hill for a reaction from the town. The townspeople's reaction was better than he expected. Mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, all ran up the hill to save the sheep. Wow. Red faced and like panting, they asked, Where is it? Even kids are fighting. Where's the dingo? You learn how to fight. The boy wow, answered them suck. with a laugh. You're actually pathetic. There was no dingo. You didn't learn I was only choking. The townspeople were angry. What a naughty boy you are. We thought your parents taught you better than that. They turned and walked back in the direction of the town. An old woman stayed behind to caution the boy. She sat down beside him and said, You must be lonely up here. Sheep do not make the best companions. The boy only wrinkled his nose and tried to ignore her. Ignore me if you want, but I thought I ought to warn you. She said her next words with passion. No one believes a liar, even when he tells the truth. Several weeks passed before the sheep returned to graze near the town. As night fell, the boy could see cozy fires glowing in the houses below. He thought, I bet the townspeople would fall see, for my prank a second time. Like it's shown I'm sorry to say the boy fight. did like not remember the old woman's like, words of bro. caution. He put his hand to his mouth and cried out into the night. Dingo! Dingo! A dingo was after the sheep! Also, why do you have a boy just to watch for dingoes? Especially since canonically dingoes can eat babies. Like, a great commotion rose heck? up from the town. The boy knew the townspeople would soon be up on the hill. He thought he was clever and laughed to himself. I can't wait to see Thomas their silly Wars. pajamas. Sure enough, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, all came running up the hill this barefoot and in their pajamas. They waved their torches right and left. Where is it? Where's the dingo? There is no dingo, answered the boy. You sure are easy to trick. You fell for my joke a second time. Perhaps you have heard of the word emotion. Emotion is another word for feeling. Now usually... When you hear a funny joke, you feel joy. Wait, quick text message. This was not the emotion the townspeople were feeling. No, the townspeople felt angry. Some of them said, That boy should be taught a lesson. Others said, I can't believe he called us out in our bare feet and pajamas. No one laughed at the naughty boy's prank. Not even the author of this story. The little boy knew the people were angry. How could he miss it? To tell you the truth, he even began to regret his prank. For several weeks, the, the sheep the grazed channel. quietly and the boy kept to himself. But wouldn't you know it, one early morning, a pack of dingoes really did come after the flock. The boy cried out a third time. Like the, it's surely dingoes! Them can fight. Why you dingoes? Like, how come dingoes they are after the sheep? How come they the only kid who can't fight to protect the dingoes? The town stayed silent. No mothers or fathers came running up the hill. No sons or daughters wearing pajamas asked, Where are they? Where are the dingoes? No one came to help save the sheep. I'm happy to say that this time the boy did remember the old woman's words of caution. But I'm sad to say that it was much too late. The dingoes began to eat the entire flock.
Not all yeah, the townspeople ignored the, the boy's cries. The bro, old bro woman heard. Got paid. She knew his cries were not a prank. She ran up the hill. With her help, she and the boy were able to save some of the sheep. The boy and the old woman became companions. She kept him company when the flock was near town. She taught him better ways to spend his time. Sometimes, he made her laugh by telling jokes. You can be sure of one thing. He never, ever told a lie again. We are finally done with the stories! Let's go!